since April 17th, uh, I'm sorry, April 18th, uh, 2007, when I first appeared at this committee, I've been on the road a lot. I've traveled from Maine to California, from Alaska to Florida, from uh, North Dakota to Louisiana and Texas. And I've been doing that to talk about these issues to the American people and recognizing that there are always regional differences, regional assets and liabilities related to energy or uh, environmental challenges. The consistent uh, thing that I brought from all of these travels and I share with the committee today is that the American people are concerned about energy security. They are concerned about environmental issues locally, regionally, and globally, including greenhouse gases. The question, uh, as, uh, as it always is, is what do we do about it and how urgently should we do it? In uh, 2007, at that hearing, we had the ch then chairman of the CNA Military Advisory Board, General Gordon Sullivan, who was a witness and talked about the first report that the CNA Military Advisory Board put out. The advisory board consists of about a dozen or 15 retired generals and admirals from all four of the military services, in include the Coast Guard and the National Guard, and came up with the uh, consensus in that report that climate change was a threat to national security because it will act as a, a, a uh, threat multiplier for instability in critical regions of the world. This can be manifested in many different ways, but uh, it occurred to me this summer when Pakistan had 20 million people affected by torrential monsoon floods, historical levels of flooding, that here is a nation that is nuclear armed, has an ongoing Taliban insurgency that threatens the stability of that government, and is essential to our success and the success of NATO in Afghanistan, and uh, we have 20 million people that are, are affected by severe weather, the type of scenario that was exactly in the minds of the military advisory board when we said climate change is a threat to national security. Another aspect of this was that the board recognized that our economy, energy, climate change, and national security are all inextricably linked. If you want to develop policies and solutions to address any one of those, you have to carefully think through the effects on all of the others. And so as a result of that, we got together and put out a report in May of 2009 that focused on the energy aspect of these interlinked challenges. And our main conclusion in that report was unequivocal. A America's energy posture constitutes a serious and urgent threat to our national security diplomatically, economically, and militarily. In the military ven venue, we see it manifesting in uh, Iraq with roadside bombs. Now in Afghanistan, we saw burning NATO fuel convoys uh, that uh, uh, were, were along the uh, Pakistan-Afghanistan border. We see from intelligence reports that petrodollars that are going to Iran are finding their way into the hands of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and are being used to buy the equipment and the very lethal projectiles and components that are killing and maiming our troops on a weekly basis over there. That money is coming from global purchase of oil and the United States purchases one quarter of that oil every year. Diplomatically, we're trying to do something about uh, preventing uh, nuclear uh, armed, uh, a nuclear armed Ar Iran from emerging. Our leverage in the international diplomatic community is undercut by the fact that we use 25% of the world's oil every year and we sit on perhaps 3%. And economically, make no mistake, the recession that we are hopefully and too slowly starting to come out of has as a fundamental cause factor the tremendous cost of our addiction to oil in the past. In fact, if you go back in history, over the past four recessions, every one of them has been preceded within six months by oil spikes, oil price spikes. This is not going to go away. We are going to come out of this recession. The economy of the world and the United States are going to heat up, and so will the appetite for oil, and so will return the volatile cycle but ever higher prices 
and ever uh, scarcer availability, certainly over the next 10 years, but perhaps even sooner than that. We have got to find ways to break that addiction. Finally, in July of this year, the Military Advisory Board put out a report titled Powering America's Economy, Energy Innovation at the Crossroads of National Security Challenges. And the key finding of this report was that our economy and our national security are so inextricably linked. As we look at uh, ways to deal with our deficit, as we look for ways to uh, afford all of the priorities uh, of America, one of the things that will be inevitably on the table will be how much do we pay for defense. If you don't have a good and strong economy, you don't have a good and strong defense structure and armed services. So there's that inextricable link. And the fact that our energy choices in the past and now and certainly going forward are going to have a tremendous effect for the good or for not good on our economic strength is the key part. The, the uh, main uh, recommendation from this report that was uh, published in, uh, in July of this year was simply, the United States government should take bold and aggressive action to support clean energy technology innovation and rapidly decrease the nation's dependence on fossil fuels. Lastly, I want to uh, share a quote from uh, Admiral Mike Mullen, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He addressed a Department of Defense Energy Forum on October 13th of this year. Quote, I'm proud of the work that the men and women of the Department of Defense are doing, the work many of you are leading to ensure we turn our own energy security from a vulnerability to the strength that it could be. Few of us can argue that the need is not there. Many of us can see that the right technology is emerging, and I hope all of us can agree that the time for change is now. He was addressing a Department of Defense Armed Services audience. His comments apply to every aspect of American society and the American uh, economy. And I'd like to close my uh, opening remarks, uh, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Sensenbrenner, by a summary that I made three years ago in April eight, on April 18th. I'll simply quote, Mr. Chairman, thank you. This is an American challenge. It is one that Americans together will meet. It doesn't have partisan labels on it. The solutions are available today. They need to be guided by leadership and good policy which enables us to advance our energy efficiency and to increase our choices of clean, renewable fuels in order to create opportunity for our economy, create opportunity for our society, and raise our level of national security, and to be a leader in the global sense in meeting these energy and climate challenges.